I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to find a sinusoidal function with respect to distance. Now most of the time we have been finding sinusoidal functions with respect to time. So here is a very good example which will help you understand how we can get sine function with different independent value. In this case it is distance traveled. So the question is the diameter of the car's tire is 52 centimeters. So just take any diameter. We have taken 52 centimeters. While the car is being driven, a tire picks up a nail. So that is the situation. So think like this. So here we have a tire, right, of a car as like kind of traveling. So it's moving in this direction. So the car is actually moving. And so what happens? It's moving like this, correct? Now it picks up a nail at this position. So if it picks up the nail, as the car is driven, the nail moves upwards, right? And it completes one full circle uh, and then again repeats the same motion. So it becomes a sinusoidal function, right? So which you could actually show like this. So the nail's position will be kind of like this. So which is a sinusoidal function? Do you see that? So that is how this function is going to be. So this is the sinusoidal function and in this particular video we will learn how to model this particular function. So in general if the diameter is d, let's say this diameter is d, we are given 52 but we can say diameter is d. In that case circumference is how much? So circumference is equals to pi times d, right? So so what will happen is one full circle means pi d. So this position from here to here, the nail which is picked up will come back to its original position after traveling a distance throughout the circumference which is pi d. So this distance will be pi times d. So the time period for your sinusoidal function is pi d, right? So that is the time period. Now what is the axis? X is the radius, correct? So, so X is for this wave is, is radius, right? So let us say radius is the axis. Now radius is also the amplitude, you see. So it goes up from the center value, R units up. Is it okay? So in general, if I have to write a sinusoidal function representing this situation, what I notice is that it starts from the minimum. So I can consider cosine wave which is reflected. Normally, the cosine will, wave will be kind of starting from 1. Now, in this case, because the nail is picked from the ground, so we say its height is 0, but as it goes to the maximum, its height will be same as the diameter. Axis will be half of the diameter, right? So, that gives us the sinusoidal function representing the height of the nail. So, we say height of the nail at a particular distance travel, let me call that distance as x, so let us say this is x amount of distance, will be equal to minus, minus since the cosine function starts from the bottom, amplitude is radius, right? So we'll say half of the diameter, right? Since we are working with diameter, half of the diameter, and the function is cosine, right? So that becomes the cosine function. Now, the question is, what is the time duration? Now it takes one full revolution in pi d, right? So, so, so the time the here the k value will be what? Will be 360 degrees. If you are doing in degrees, it will be 360 degrees divided by pi d, right? Divided by pi d times x. So that becomes the cosine argument, and the axis, you know, is is radius which we could write as d over 2. So this really reflects the cosine function in this particular case. In case you are working in radians then instead of 360 you write 2 pi. Okay it becomes simpler equation in radians. Since uh, in radians this equation will be written as uh, let me write here h of x equals to minus diameter half cos of. So this will be I'm not simplifying it, just writing, writing 2 pi since one full circle is 2 pi radians, right? Pi over dx, is that okay? Pi and pi cancels and uh, you can simplify this also. Okay, so that's fine. Anyway, 
plus of course half of diameter run. So in general that is going to be the equation in radians. We will continue to work with degrees for the time being. Right. Now the question is uh, if I am given that the tire's wheel is 52 centimeters, then what is the equation which represents the height of the nail at any uh, distance traveled by the car? So we are relating height of the nail with reference to distance traveled horizontally by the car. So in this given scenario, where 52 is the diameter, we say height is equals to uh, half of 52, let me write 52 half cos of 360 degrees over pi 52, 52 pi I should have written, okay, times x plus 52 half of 52, right? So that really helps you to capture the equation, right? Now, you could always convert this to decimal values, which is minus it is 26, right? 26 cos of uh, this value. So I really need calculator to find this answer. Let me get one, just a minute. Now to find 30, 360 divided, now to find 360 divided by this, let me get the calculator. Here is one. Let's calculate this. So we have 360 divided by pi, let me say 3.14, and then we'll divide this by 52, right? Divide this by 52. So in decimals, we'll get uh, 2.2048. So we'll just keep 2.2 for the time being, right? So it is. 2.2 for more accuracy you could take four decimal places right so no harm but we'll just take that much for the time being right plus 26 okay so that becomes the equation for us i hope till now everything is very clear to you how to get the equation for height of the nail so what are we finding we are finding height of the nail with respect to distance travel correct now you can uh, calcul do some calculations, right? So you can find height of the nail when the distance traveled is, let us say, 100 meters. So now the question is, let's try to find out height of the nail if, if x, the distance travel is 100 meters, right? Now you should see that units are centimeters. So 100 meters will be equals to 100 times 100. So let's say 100 times 100 centimeters, right? So that is how first convert the units. Now let's find the height of the nail when the distance traveled by the wheel is, is 100 meters or 100 times 100 centimeters, right? So everything is in centimeters. So we'll write this as minus 26 cos of 2.2 times times let's say 2.2 times 100 100 now now since this number is very large it was a good idea to take the value not so approximate but a value of 2.2048 could have been a better value to do right so what i will do is i will use this value to do this calculation we'll get far accurate result right so I already have 2.2048 in the calculator. I'll multiply this by 100 times 100, right? So 100 and 100. So, so we get some big number. Let's take cos of this. So we say cos of the answer equals to, right? And we'll multiply this by, uh, by, by minus 26, okay, minus 26. And then we'll add 26 to this. So when we add 26 to this, we get 25.09. So we get this answer as uh, 25.09. Okay, so 25.1 you can say centimeters. So all this is in centimeters. So what we are saying is that the height of the nail will be 25.09 centimeters 
when the tire has moved 100 meters correct so that is how you can actually find height of the nail for different distances you get the idea so so what you can do as a test question you can say find height you can say find height of the nail when x is equals to one kilometer right so that could be your exercise to do in the next video we will try to find uh, we'll try to find uh, how much distance so in the next video we'll try to find distance traveled distance traveled from given height of the nail so given height of the nail so let us say if the nail is 20 centimeters above right so in that case how much has the tire moved so we'll do the reverse in the next video right so you can try that also and then watch my next video to see how to find x when we are given h of x that is the reverse calculation which we'll do in the next video i hope that helps thank you and all the best